Every Monday on Tennis.com, you read about this what's at stake. Here's a little bit of our what's at stake, and today it does revolve around this week's official rankings. Both ATP and WTA come out in the Australian Open. The seeds will follow that directly. There are going to be some shifts, minor shifts, because of players that have pulled out. So let's take a look at the men first here, and the obvious one is the guys at top. The same ones who ended last year, and Rafa and Roger. But then you look, and of course, Novak winds up at 14, and uh, John Isner slides in at 16. Yeah, we were very curious where Novak was going to end up, and we can't wait to see the draw because we're so used to seeing him towards the top there. So definitely a, a def different type of year with the draw. And for Novak, he's playing a couple of exhibitions this week to test out his elbow. That's right. And so, of course, the dynamic exists that we've seen the last couple of years. It's a little bit flipped now. You could have like a fourth round between Djokovic yeah, and exactly. Federer or Djokovic and Nadal. This time it's because of Nokovic, Novak's slip, rather, in the rankings. With his Brisbane title, Nick Kyrgios has climbed to 17. And so, in essence, it would be Djokovic if for some reason mm -hmm. he can't play. Kyrgios would jump to 16. What's the significance of that? The significance is right now he can play a top player in the round of 32. And if Djokovic pulls out, they would move Nick Kyrgios into his position, into Novak's position at number 12, before, um, if it's between when they uh, make the seeds come out, which has happened already, and when the first ball is hit. So obviously there's a few more days to see if Novak's able to play at the Australian Open. He, as we mentioned, he's playing a couple of exhibitions this week to test that elbow. The interesting thing there is that Kyrgios went on record to say there's been the discussion about going down to 16 seeds at the Slam starting in 2019, and he was in favor of that. So maybe he's not concerned about moving up into the top 16 seeds. He likes playing the big guys early, so. Yeah, I was going to ask, so put yourself, Nolsey, in, does Kyrgios care if he's 16 or 17? Is that a big deal to him? No, no. I, I yeah. don't think I don't I think, think most much people do, maybe about. not him. Yeah. Why did but, I, I mean, just think that a, was a foolish question? <laughs> I just asked, does Kyrgios most care? What was do, I thinking? But, <laughs> but who wants to play Kyrgios, though, as well? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he just, most he just beat Dimitrov in the last tournament. Yeah, that's a big concern. Most players would want to make that jump into the top 16 and protect themselves. Absolutely. For an extra round as well. I guess we've learned is maybe a little bit different. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the women's top 16. And uh, this is with the, by the way, one player's already been eliminated, and that's Svetlana Kuznetsova. She's 14 in the world, but she's already pulled out of the Australian, so we don't see her name there. That lifts Vesnina up into 16, and it's Madison Keys that's on the bubble right Yeah, now. Madison is number 18 right now. But this is a big deal when you're Joe Conta and you're number nine. Now you're playing one through eight, that one round earlier for Vesmina to sneak into number 16. That's helpful for her. But boy, when you look at, it, at the season, Sloane Stevens, uh, she has not won a match since winning the U.S. Open. Julia Gerges has been on fire. She's won the last three tournaments that she's played. And you see that Caroline Wozniacki has jumped into the number two position Isn't as well. Isn't that something? Yeah. That's, that's really something. But you mentioned Sloane. Sloane was pounded yesterday by Georgie, three in love in their match. And now here's Madison. Again, she's one spot away from climbing into that 16. Yeah, and the flip side of that, we talk about the seeds that way, but also the other way. The top players don't necessarily want to play somebody as dangerous as Madison a, year, a round earlier. So that's also a part that maybe even the top players are keeping an eye out. We remember last year with Federer, we were wondering where they're going to end up in the draw. What about Sharapova? Who wants to play Sharapova? That's... Remember the U.S. Open last year? She played Halep right. in the first round and, and took her out, and then... Uh, I mean, Sharapova right now is ranked about 47. 47 yeah, she got yeah. to the semifinals of Shenzhen, lost to Siniakova. But she's always a dangerous floater, I mean, mm -hmm. at 47. So it's yeah. really, really interesting. Stan Wawrinka at number nine. He hasn't played a match after since coming back from knee surgery. So it's very topsy-turvy. March is the month, uh, for those of us who follow college basketball, we've learned about the word bubble in tennis. It's four times a year you have the bubble. So this is the first major, and that bubbles to get the 32, to get a seat, to not have to be in the position Sharapova was at the Open. So here are 31 through 36 as of right now. And you see I mean, familiar names like Gasquet and Z Misha Zverev, Pablo Cuevas, who we're going to see at the bottom of the hour. He's on the verge of grabbing a spot. Yeah, and you, you don't want to play a guy like Feliciano Lopez. We, we know how good he is, and especially last year in Australia, the courts played pretty quick. So we, we're yet to know the speed this year, but if they play fast, 
that is a very dangerous floater. And we should also mention, just to be thorough here, Andy Murray and Kay Nishikori have already pulled out. So Cuevas at 33 and Zverev at 34 are going to be seated. They're yep. going to jump. So those are the, they're at least two in. And then it would be Krajinovich who would be the beneficiary for some reason. Boy, he has come out of right. nowhere. He was a qualifier in Paris in the fall and right. got to the finals. If anyone else were to not make the opening bell there, the Karinovich would be the next one in. So Cuevas does get in. All right, let's look at the ladies, 31 through 36. And again, familiar names, players who've been at the top in Safarova and Makarova. Yeah, Safarova, French finalist. Makarova just beat Ostapenko. Mertens is coming on strong, coached by Kim Kleisters. Uh, really, really interesting. Safarova actually just lost to Kerber in Sydney, and she had two match points. So that's... She, She's always dangerous as well. And, and right now, the, the women are in the same exact spot. Makarova and Kontavite have both earned, they'll bump up two spots because of two withdrawals. Of course, Serena being one of them. Serena still in the top 25, will not play. So it's Zhang and Mertens who are the ones that are hoping for some good fortune. It would be somebody else's poor fortune, obviously, but they could snag that it's seed. It's so important to get that seed. That's it the one really I would think. That's the most part. important part. Because then you don't yeah. play another seed until at least the third round. And that's just, mm -hmm. it's just huge. And that's why I don't like the change. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs>